The next question is, which verses prove that Mary wasn't sinless? All right. Ben, will you answer that? Sure, that's a pretty easy one. Um, well, Romans says, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Uh, Christ was God, so obviously he didn't sin. But everyone else, uh, all man, whoever's born, was uh, has, has, has sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Ecclesi Ecclesiastic. Ecclesiastes uh, 7 verse 20 says, For there is not a just man on earth who does not who does good and does not sin. Uh, Romans 3, uh, 9 through 18 says, and I like this verse because it's kind of like a doctor examining the different um, a patient on the examining table to see what their sickness is. And so ver verse 9 says, What then? Are we better than they? Not at all. For we have previously charged both Jews and Greeks that they are all under sin. As it is written, there is no none righteous, no, not one. There is none who understands. There is none who seeks after God. They have all turned aside. They have, have together become unprofitable. There is none who does good, no, not one. And then he kind of opens their throat, like a doctor putting a, you know, Open, asking the patient to open his open his, open his mouth and say, okay, let's let's see what if we got any problems, you know, sore throat or anything. He says, their throat is an open tomb. With their tongues, they have practiced deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. And then he looks at their feet and said, okay, well, let's see what let's see how your feet are doing. It's it's like from head to toe. Uh, your your feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the ways of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Um, and so I think, again, right there, those, those couple of verses there would prove, I think, irrefutably that uh, everyone sin, has sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And we all need a Savior, including Mary. All right. Renee, what are you saying? Yep. And I will prove that Mary knew she was a sinner herself. All right. So let's go. He's absolutely right. Nobody is exempt from that. Every person she's blessed now, all the nations would call her blessed because of what she carried in her womb, that holy thing. OK, first of all, we see God being called Mary's savior. Why would Mary need a savior if she was sinless? Why, why would she need a saint? She wouldn't need one. Right. But we all need a savior because we've all sinned. All right. Mary said, my soul doth magnify the Lord. This is in Luke chapter 1, 47. And my spirit hath rejoiced in God, my Savior, for he has regarded the lowest state of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth, all generations shall call me blessed. And we do. But it wasn't because she was sinless or was the queen of heaven, or was the co-redeemer, or a co-mediatrix, but because she carried the Savior in her womb, God manifested in the flesh. So she calls God her Savior right here. But let me show you, she made a sin offering for her sin, according to Leviticus. All right, if you go back to Leviticus, it talks about, let me see how you can even go to it. Leviticus 12, 1 through 8. Uh, it's just a general thing of what they have to do. Speak to the sons of Israel saying, when a woman gives birth and bears a male child, then she shall be unclean for seven days. As in the days of her menstruation, she shall be unclean. So they had to make a sin offering. So we're going to go over to Luke chapter 2, 21. And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Jesus, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And when the days of her purification, according to the law of Moses, were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that openeth the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. And to offer a sacrifice to that which is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. So uh, she clearly offers, if you go back to Leviticus 12, she offers a sin offering according to the Levitical law. So um, go back and read it yourself. Mary observed the law of Moses. Uh, there would be no need for animal sacrifice if she had no sin. 
She also calls God her savior. Nowhere in scripture does it say Mary was sinless, but it says Mary will be called blessed. And she's blessed because of the fruit of her womb, not because of anything inherent in her. Amen. Well, after Ben and Renee, uh, what's left for me on this question? I you covered all the, the points that I would have covered. Uh, I, I will say that, um, Ben, you, you certainly mentioned uh, some prominent verses that are clear. And of course, the, I keep on trying to drive this point home, and I, I'll continue doing it until I'm gone. Uh, that the most important thing, if, if you want to um, have a doctrine, is you've got to base it on what the Bible clearly states. It's got to be explicit where it's not ambiguous, not up for debate what it means. And then if it is stated clearly and explicitly, is it repeated over and over and over again? Uh, so we got in 1 Kings 8.46, uh, the verse that I think Ben mentioned that, when they sin against you, for there is no man who does not sin, it says. And uh, Romans 3.10, there is none righteous, not even one. That means Without exception, everyone. That would mean everyone, including Mary. It would include Jesus if we knew that he was he was uh, sinless because he said, who convinced me of sin? He, declared, he was declaring he had no sin. Prove it. If you think I'm a sinner in any way, prove it. You can't because I haven't sinned. Uh, Psalm 14, and it says there's no one good, no one who does good, and uh, uh, there is no one who does good, not even one. There was no one who does good. There is uh, no one who does good, not even one. It's repeated over and over again through the Psalms, that, that point. Uh, so, uh, and, and then, of course, it says both Jews and Greeks are all under sin. Jews are the select small group of people, about maybe less than 1% of the world's population are the Jews. Everybody else that's not a Jew is considered a Greek or a Gentile in the Bible. So that's, that, that leaves no one out. Everybody in the whole world, Jews and the rest of the world are all under sin. And so we all fall short of the glory of God. It says we've all sinned. Only Jesus uh, and, and has uh, met the mark of living a sinless, perfect life. That's the standard that he set as an example for us. And yet we can strive all we want, but we will fall short of the life that Jesus led. Um, and then of course, the question asks, but not just has anybody been sinless, but particularly referring to Mary, the fact that she actually admitted that she needed a savior. She said, God is her savior. You don't need a savior if, if you're perfect. Uh, and then of course, offering the sin offering, as uh, Renee explained, uh, she wouldn't have done that if there was no need if she was sinless. So um, it, it's really clear uh, there, there should be nobody who would accept this. This is another example, another Roman Catholic false teaching, not yeah. biblical, but a teaching from a pope. Yeah, yeah. and I want to uh, mention that too, Brother Luke. These things about Mary, they're relatively recent. Um, all of this stuff about her being co-redemptrix, co-mediatrix, the queen of heaven. This is recent. We're talking in the last few hundred years. Uh, there have been hope, popes that dedicate their whole uh, lives to her, like John Paul II, uh, dedicating entire cities to her, saying she saved him when he was shot, etc. Uh, it's it's all wrong. Uh, and the more time goes by, the more doctrines about Mary come come about because they 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 started attributing divine traits to Mary the last couple hundred years. Like she ascended to heaven. That's not in the Bible. She herself was sinless. Now they're even trying to say she herself was virgin born. Um, so they're trying to attribute uh, uh, um, things, quali qualities of the Godhead. They're trying to put on her as part of uh, the, the Godhead. And some people actually think the Trinity and Muslims believe this about Christians, that the Trinity is actually Jesus, Mary and the father. Uh, 
So it's gotten very convoluted. But these teachings don't go back to ancient, ancient Roman church. These things came about over the last few hundred years, even in the medieval times. I think it was like 1600s when they started attributing uh, these qualities to Mary. But uh, there's always been a faction that elevated Mary because when the pagans were converted, they had a virgin child cult. All the Babylonian religions of all the pagans all had a virgin child cult. Semiramis and Tammuz, Osiris and uh, Isis. I mean, you go to any of the pagans, they all have a mother child cult. So a lot of the pagans just came in and started worshiping her in replacement of whatever pagan goddess they had. Uh, I did want to make a comment. We got a couple of questions that were pertaining to the Catholic Church tonight. And I want to say uh, I I love Catholic people. Uh, matter of fact, the Ben Ben's been praying for his Catholic family. We had someone in the chat praying for their Catholic family. Uh, and I wanted to say some of these things that you're asking, they do not have scriptural support. The Catholic Church will admit it is not in the Bible. They try to to show you some places, but it, it and try to support it. But it's basically tradition and popes. In the 1800s, they started preaching that Mary was immaculately conceived also. Because if she wasn't, then Jesus couldn't have been sinless. And that's nonsense. That is not true. The holy thing was put in her womb. It had nothing to do with Mary being sinless. If that's the case, how many generations back do we have to go and make her family sinless? Mary's mother, Mary's mother, Mary's mother's grandmother. How? I mean, how far back do we have to go to get, get these people sinless here? That's crazy. Uh, and there is no biblical support for it. If you want to research these things and how these heresies grow, you'll see that they come in through tradition and popes. It is not in the Bible. You can research that. That's why we reject it. We consider God's word to be the Bible. If it's not in there or it refutes what the Bible says, then we reject it. I think even the angel, when they approached Mary and said that you will be conceived, you will receive a child, she said, uh, he said that you found favor. Well, favor means grace and, and grace means, uh, you know, you're, you're not worthy. Um, it, right. assume, you know, so it, it, it grace is it, devoid of merit. So that's right. That's a good point then. Yeah. It's devoid of merit. And plus the time when somebody tried to worship Mary, do you guys remember that? Jesus was there. He shut it down. These people were crying out to Jesus's mother. Uh, blessed is your breast. Blessed is your womb. And he's like, no, rather are they that are blessed that hear my father's word and do it or something like that. Yes, Remember? Yes. He yes. Shut it down. He shut the mama worship down early. <laughs> I don't... Yeah, I'm sorry to go back, but I, I, I wanted to read that one verse. That where they're trying to worship Mary in the crowd. Yeah, All right. Yeah, this is yeah Luke do that, 11, please. Thank you. Luke eleven twenty seven, And it came to pass, as Jesus, as he spoke these things, a certain woman of the company lifted up her voice and said unto him, Blessed is the womb that bare thee and the paps which thou hast sucked. And he said, Yea, rather, rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. Yeah, she's called blessed. She's she is blessed because she bore Jesus and brought him to the world. But the minute the woman starts trying to praise his mama, it's shut down. Yea, rather blessed are those that hear the word of God and do it. You know, I um, I'm glad you read that because I I don't didn't when you cited it originally I didn't didn't remember it and uh, I'm not challenging that was there but uh, i just don't remember it and i seem like i should have remembered that but is this the same uh time as when uh she and the his brothers are wanting to come in get his attention and he says he, he ignores them and says i hey i'm brothers who's my mother and my brother is that brother. the same uh verse section or different i don't know uh, it's different it's different i think that's an i think that's a matthew where this is in luke renee quoted luke 11. Who are 
other and brothers. Well, right. I'm not talking about if it's a, if it's a, a parallel, uh, you know, a, 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 another account of the same thing. Is it the same thing, or is it these two different events? Two different things. Two different things. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay, that's good because I somehow, <laughs> somehow I missed that. Oh, okay. That was a good one. Uh, all right. Let's go to the next verse.